Hey, welcome to this presentation. We're covering commercial plans and discussing how a plumber can get to know those plans. My name is Thomas, and in this presentation, we're focusing on the plumbing pages that are contained within a commercial plan. Now, commercial plans differ from residential plans, as we've discussed in previous presentations, because they have a lot more details and they have plumbing pages. Most residential plans don't have that much detail and don't have plumbing pages. Now, some plumbers may be saying, you know what, I never do commercial work. I never look at commercial plans. So why should I even learn this? Well, let me just stop you right there and say, the more you know, the more useful you are, just like a tool, a multi-tool. And if you can add something to who you are and to what you know, you become more valuable. That opens doors of opportunity for you. A door that would otherwise close in your face when you're like, I don't know how to read these plans. I don't know enough to run this job. Now you might be like, I know what I'm doing. I know how to read this. I can figure this out and make this happen. Opportunities open up when you're ready. So take this seriously. See what you can learn about reading plumbing pages. We're going to go through a whole bunch of pages and diagrams. These are from actual plans that I have worked on myself. And that's where all of these diagrams are coming from. So you want to be able to read and interpret those and understand what you're supposed to build and how you're supposed to build it based on what those plumbing plans and details are telling you. Okay, man, you've convinced me. I want to see how this works. So let me explain what we're going to do as we get into these plumbing pages. I'm going to take you through some parts, some different elements of those pages. It may seem like a random explanation of this and that based on whatever we find in plumbing pages, but hopefully it gives you enough, a broad enough view of what is in there and what information you can look for that's useful. It's interesting though, as you get into commercial plans that that you're not gonna find the same information on all of them. Some of the diagrams or different illustrations that I'll show you may or may not be on each of the different plans. And so you kind of just take whatever you're given. It's a hodgepodge of information with drawings and details and you interpret whatever they give you based on what's there. But I'm gonna try and give you a broad range of like, here are things that you could see on plumbing pages. And hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea of what to look for. Okay, now I want you to imagine yourself in your future. Imagine yourself having a journeyman license, and maybe you do that all the time, and you should do that all the time because that helps you go there and get your journeyman license. Imagine yourself that you have your journeyman license, and now your employer comes to you and says, hey, you are ready. I can put you on this job. You can be in charge and you can have apprentices under you. Here's the plan. I want you to run this. That was exactly the experience that I had. And boom, there it was on the desk. And I'm looking at the pages and I'm trying to figure out, start to finish, what do I need to do to make this work? That can be overwhelming. All right, so you might be asking, what's so overwhelming about that, Tom? Well, check it out. When you're given that plan with all the plumbing pages and all the other pages, here are some of the tasks that you need to do. And, and let's say this isn't just a small building. You know, this isn't something simple like roughing in a track home or something. Here's the things we need to do. We need to write a drainage pipe and fitting list. So looking at all the drains that go in the entire building from the underground to the vents out the roof, and maybe we're even looking at roof drains and all the piping that has to go in there. I've got to come up with a comprehensive list of materials. That's a lot to do. Then there's the water lines. So we're talking about water pipe and fitting list. I've got to go back through and look at all of the water lines. What are the pipe sizes? How much pipe do I need? How many fittings? What types of fittings? What types of tees? There are a lot of things that you have to figure out that way. And then if we go to just the underground, say we're gearing up and trying to get ready for the underground. Now I have to come up with the measurements for every single pipe that penetrates up through that concrete. I have to have at least two measurements. 
so that those pipes are going to come up in the walls where I need them to. And that's for every single pipe. What if there's hundreds of pipes? That means I have to have come up with hundreds and hundreds of measurements, each one individual, a set of measurements for each pipe. So they come up in exactly the right places, my toilets, my labs, my tubs, or my drinking fountains. So there's a lot to work through when you get a big job and a commercial plan. And it can be overwhelming. And that's how I felt, if, especially when I first got into those. It was just like, there is so much here that I've got to figure out on the plumbing side. And that's where you have to realize that this is going to take time and you need to be okay with that. Don't rush it. Because when you rush, you skip. And when you skip information, then you're going to be left with some problems. That's how that works. So you take your time, even if that takes days or even weeks, and you're sorting it out and you're figuring what that needs. And sometimes that might be on top of your other workload. Maybe you're still going out and doing other plumbing work, but this project has been assigned, so you need to commit some time to it. Um, but you're getting to know the job and getting to know everything about it. Take a look at this page. This might be kind of hard for you to see all the detail, but I hope you can recognize there's an outline of a building. There's lots of rooms in here, and there is a ton of plumbing on this. It has on the same page all of the drainage lines, the vent lines, the water, cold water lines, hot water, recirculation, roof drains, hose bibs, everything layered in on here on top of each other on this same page. This is what I mean by like, it gets overwhelming when you zoom in on this and it's like, how am I going to keep all this straight? How am I going to figure out what I need for all of this? And that's where you need to slow it down, zoom in, take your time. Nice thing about plans nowadays is they are often available on PDF on the computer. So you can actually zoom in on sections. Whereas when I was running jobs 15, 20 years ago, it was all paper. You know, you can just put your face closer to it, but it doesn't get any bigger. <laughs> now you can at least enlarge things, have a closer look if it's a PDF, but that's what you'll need to do. A good thing to look for on the plumbing page is the plumbing piping legend. If you're looking at a page loaded with pipes and they're layered over each other, this is going to be really helpful to identify which is which. Look at the differences between these lines. They use bold or not. They use perforation or dashes or not. Sometimes they intersperse like a long line with a single dash or two dashes. This helps us to differentiate as we're looking on the plan. Look down the list here. We've got waste below grade. That's our drainage pipe. So it's a little more solid, longer lines separated. Then you get vents and vent lines are always going to be smaller dash perforated. Cold water lines is not as bold but it does have a separation in there with a little dash in between. Hot water lines is similar, but it has two dashes. Hot water recirculation, very similar, but three dashes. So you can see the difference between cold, hot, and recirc. And then we get to other things like roof drains. They'll just put some lettering right in there, RD for roof drain, or RD below ground. RDO meaning overflow or the secondary roof drain. And this way we can differentiate which is which. On the bottom we have just a typical drain. Now to help me out as I'm looking at pages, when I'm looking at a big paper plan, it is super helpful to add some color. Those colors are gonna go a long way to help me separate one system from another. So I go through with my dark green. That's gonna be all my sewer and waste. Lighter green is going to be all my vent lines. Still drainage, waste and vent, but we're looking at vents. Blue makes sense for cold, right? Hot water, red. I might do a different color, orange or something, for hot water recirculation. You might add different colors for your roof drains. Gas line, of course, is always going to be yellow. That's typical for gas line. You can select which colors are which. To me, it makes sense to have green on drainage, yellow on gas, blue on water cold water, red on hot water. Once the lines are colored, then if I need to look at a specific system, I can tune my mind to that color. And it's almost like it stands out of the page. It's like, okay, I'm looking at drains, all the greens, and I'm just looking at green. And it helps me to focus and pull out the information I need from those. So coloring can go a long ways. And not only that, but when you take the time 
to trace the lines through with a pencil is putting that into your mind, is printing into your brain that plan, where things go. And that can make a difference in your understanding level. If you just give it a quick glance, that's one thing. But if you've dug in and really looked at it, that can really help your understanding of the overall picture. So it's a, it's a study, right? I'm going to study the plan. I'm going to color it. And by the time I'm done with that, I should have a really good idea of what's going on. And I'm ready to start taking my lists. If I need to get my drainage list, I follow there, that through and I figure out which fittings are there, which fittings I figure I need, and I can come up with my lists. Here we have a fixture layout page of a plumbing plan. And this is a hotel. It gives you the layout of the room. This is a plan view like you'd see on the architectural pages. But they've pulled off all the measurements. You've got room numbers. But what they have on there are all of the fixtures. So you've got your toilet, tub, and lab for each of the hotel rooms. And with that, they have like a detail of which of those toilets, tubs, labs, whatever you're supposed to use. Here's another page from the same building, but this is just a two-dimensional sewer drain waste vent plan. This one really doesn't help us as much as far as like how exactly do they want this to go into the building, but it does give us pipe sizes. And that gives us what we need to meet for pipe sizes as we're figuring out a material list. Plumbing pages often also include not only the plan view diagram with pipes drawn onto them like this. This is a water line diagram. It's got the cold water coming into the building, being distributed to different fixtures, a hot water coming from the water heater elsewhere in the building. But they'll also give isometric drawings. But the isometrics are a three-dimensional version of the same thing. And that helps us to see, again, if we're trying to plan out where we're going to run lines, what sort of fittings we need, we can see what's expected as they want it installed. Here's the same area of the building with the drainage waste and vent represented. And we're going to see dark bold for the drains, the perforated line for the vents. This is in the plan view, so we're looking down, but we're seeing the pipes from above. And then we get the isometric view where this shows us three-dimensionally. Here's where the fixtures are. Here's how we expect the lines to run and how the vents should be tying together and going out through the roof. Now, not every plan is going to give you an isometric drawing. But if they do, that, that should be a pretty good indicator of what they expect. And you want to try to install according to that as close as possible. Now, you and I know when we come to actually installing plumbing that there's always going to be variables. I may have to move around a duct or some structural beam or something, but generally this gives us where things should be going from point A to point B, and it's really helpful to have this much detail drawn in. You can see why it's important to be able to look at these drawings. You're looking at the plan view where you're looking down from above to see what's what, but putting that together with the isometric view to say, okay, this is how it's going to come into three-dimensional space as these lines come up into the walls and up into the ceilings. Let's talk about another important thing to look for on a commercial plan in the plumbing pages. You want to look for the plumbing fixture schedule. Now, this is a table. That's not even a drawing. But this table has some really helpful information. It's going to detail out what all of those fixtures are. As we look at this table, you can see it's kind of wavy because I actually took a picture of a plan and the page wasn't setting down all perfectly, but here is the table. On the left, there's this symbol that you can look for on the plan. The next column tells us what those fixtures are. Then it gives us columns with the drainage, that's the waste, the vents, the cold water and the hot water supply sizes. That's helpful to know for every fixture. And then last, it gives us notes. This will tell us more information about those fixtures. Take the two fixtures on this list, for example. Both of these are water closets. We have water closet one and water closet two. What's the difference? The drain looks the same. The vent looks the same. The water supply is one inch. 
but it's on the far right side that we see. These are wall-mounted flush valve. The second toilet on the list is ADA, where the first ones are not. So some of them we can set at normal toilet height, and then the others are going to be specified as ADA. We'll have to set those toilets higher so that they are at the right elevation for ADA. You see a similar thing with urinals, lavatories, all the different fixtures that go into this building are detailed on this plumbing fixture schedule. Here's an example of a plumbing fixture schedule from a different plan, but we see the same sort of information on there actually in the same columns. We have the fixture number or the symbol is going to be on the left, a list of what those fixtures are, some of the details about pipe sizes, and then comments that are going to tell us more. Notice the top two lines are water closets or toilets again. One of these is floor mounted. The other is wall hung. So these are really important details for you when you're figuring out your rough. Um, wall hung is going to need a carrier and we're going to pipe that totally different than if it's a floor mount and I can just bring a pipe up like normal, put a flange on it. So I've got to know those things and plan ahead and this is where I can figure that out. All right, we've looked at the plumbing pages. Anytime you get a plan, you're gonna to wanna to look through all of those. And we spend more time in the plumbing pages than any other pages. I've mentioned in the previous presentations, you wanna know the whole plan. You wanna flip through everything. But you're gonna spend more time than ever in the plumbing pages. In this presentation, we've looked at those pages and key information that you would want to find. The legend that shows you the pipes the fixture schedule that shows you what goes into the building. But there's a lot of other details that you're going to find on plumbing pages. In the next presentation, I'm going to go over details. These are zoomed in detailed drawings that give you a lot more information about specific parts of the plumbing system. So join me in the next video. We'll check out plumbing details. I'll see you there.